Hello everyone, I'm T.A. Barron. Welcome to my writing room. I would love to read to you now from my book, Tree Girl, Chapter 2. Just as she reached the edge of the thatched roof, Anna saw a faint shape on the horizon a shape that came steadily closer. Master Melwin! He rowed his boat across the lagoon, cutting through the dusky purple waves. Strings of kelp hung from the hull like a scraggly beard. Anna jumped off and dropped to the ground with a thud, spraying sand all around. Her apron flapped against her thighs. From inside the pocket, the sparrow gave an angry squawk. There now, little one! She gently patted down the apron. Your first flight, how did you like it? The bird tried to bite her with his tiny beak. Oh, I'm glad. You did beautifully, really. Someday you'll be a great flyer. She cocked her head. You'll be needing a name, though. Whatever should I call you? She stroked the bird's crumpled wing. I, a great flyer, one who soars way above the clouds, like an eagle. And so Eagle got his name. Anna scurried about and gathered enough woolly lichen to make him a new nest. Above her, the branches of old burl stirred in the evening air, almost as if they were laughing. Green needles sprinkled the sand. Seeing the boat approach the beach now, Anna rushed inside. She threw the nest on the kitchen shelf, patted down its sides, and set the bird inside. Then she tossed him a slice of leftover mackerel, just as the cottage door swung open. A bent, graying man strode in. So much sea salt encrusted him that he looked like a walking barnacle. With a grunt, he dumped a fish on the rough-hewn table, the only piece of furniture in the cottage, but for the two driftwood chairs. <coughs> a mackerel, said Anna brightly. You did well today, master. She tried to catch his eye, but he turned away too soon. So she took the smallest knife from the shelf, poured some rainwater into a bucket, and started to clean the fish. The old man grunted again. Well enough, mayhaps, to keep us from starving tonight. Thunder and blast, girl. I wonder if I was worthwhile carrying my skillet all the way here, seeing how few vittles ever get into it. Oh, but you're a grand fisherman, you are. You just crab shells, he cursed, cutting her off. He struggled to pull off his soggy sweater, flapping his arms and spraying Anna with seawater. At last, he flung the sweater, woven from shoots of dune grass, over the chair nearest the hearth. It dripped on the earthen floor. The old man sat down heavily in the other chair. One of its legs buckled beneath him. With a fresh spate of curses, he propped the broken chair against the main post of the cottage. Then he seated himself again, grabbed a tangled net of vines off the floor, and started to tie up the loose ends. Anna, meanwhile, went back to fixing the fish. She started to sing softly, with no particular tune, something she often did for the master. She felt sure at times that he was pleased by her voice, though... He never said so outright. She sang about cresting waves and long-necked gulls, leaping dolphins and bright blue shells. Then came a poem she had made up some time before. Silver whale, silver whale, swim home to me, for I am your anchor, your windward, your lee. Wide be your tail, I wide as the sea, silver whale, silver whale, swim home to me. Seal puppy, seal puppy, glide home to me, for I am your haven, your windward, your lee. Soft be your nose, I soft as the sea, seal puppy, seal puppy, glide home to me. Eider bird, eider bird, fly home to me, for I am your landing, your windward your lee. Wet be your wings, I wet as the sea. Eider bird, eider bird, fly home to me. All of you, all of you, 
Come home to me, for I am your everywhere. I am the sea. Visit yon shores, I mountain and tree, but ever your heart shall return home to me. While she worked and sang, Anna tapped her bare feet on the dirt. Every so often she kicked a leg out to the side, or even spun a turn, but the master didn't seem to notice. After a while, he grunted and cast the net aside. Stiffly, he stepped over to the hearth. He blew on the coals, then added some shards of wood. The room warmed, and the wet sweater started steaming. He reached for his pipe, carved from a chunk of purple coral, taking some dried kelp from his pouch. He packed it into the pipe, along with an ember from the hearth. After a few puffs of greenish smoke, he turned to watch Anna sway and sing. At last, he said, you be outside when I came home. She glanced up from the mackerel. Yes. You not be entering the forest while I'm gone. No, sir. He kept watching her, and for an instant his face seemed to soften. Dancing on the beach, I'll wager. Her cheeks flushed a little. I do love to dance. Aye, that you do. You be a dancing ever since you started to crawl. He waved his hand that held the pipe, leaving a stream of smoke. Right here, on this very floor. Anna nearly grinned. The master's mood had certainly improved. What was it like, she asked, that day you found me in the forest? You've never told me a barnacle about it. He stiffened. Nor will I. Don't be getting curious about that forest now. I'm, I'm not curious about that, though her voice warbled like a baby gull, she added, just about where you found me, where I belong. You belong right here, he shouted, right here in this cottage, nowhere else. Do you understand? She lowered her head. Well, do you? Aye, she said weakly. Good. He gave a sharp nod, making his gray locks bounce on his forehead. And don't even think about looking closer at yon trees. Them ghouls have no mercy, not even for a foolish girl. Anna bit her lip and started to lard the skillet. Claw you to bleeding shreds, they will, he rubbed his knuckles. Or crush you, bone and all, with their grasping feet. Why, I only enter the forest when I truly must, to fetch... I know, I know, master, she finished. A wooden post or some vines for the nets. Not seeing his glare, she slid the fish into the skillet and carried it over to the hearth. <sighs> you needn't remind me again. His hand shot out and caught her by the elbow. Indeed I do, Rowana. His gray eyes glowed, and he squeezed so hard she almost dropped the skillet. For the ghouls be awaiting, just hoping you'll make a mistake. Just one mistake. She shook free and backed away, rubbing her sore elbow. The spider web of lines creased his, his brow. Twas nine years ago, Rowana, when I first found you in that forest. When I first found you, barely a baby, alone, all alone, wailing in the roots of the high willow. Anna winced in surprise. The willow? You found me there? I found you in the forest. Thunder and blast, girl, that's all that matters. His voice fell to something like a sigh, and that spider web of lines grew deeper. They got your parents, that's certain, and I'll swear by the ghost of me own mother's grave, they almost got us. He frowned. The haunted woods be no place at all for someone of human blood. No place at all. You understand? Yes, sir. Slowly she turned back to the hearth, but she couldn't keep from wondering at his words. The willow. She had been found at the willow. Neither of them spoke again. Anna placed the fish over the fire and tended the coals. Before long, sizzling sounds and tangy smells filled the cottage. Firelight pranced over the walls and the sooty thatch above their heads. 
A sudden wind blew open the shutter. When Anna rushed over to close it, one of Burl's branches reached inside and tickled her forearm. But she just pushed it away and lashed the shutter. This wasn't the time for pranks. She had something more to say to the master, something she just had to ask. She looked into Eagle's nest. The little bird was sleeping, though one foot slapped at the air. She set a crust of seaweed beside him. Then, returning to the, to the hearth, she flipped the fish and added some sea cabbage and bladder weed. Soon the meal was ready, and she brought it over to the table. For some time, they ate in silence. When Anna poured the master some duneberry ale from his flagon, he barely grunted in thanks. Finally, she drew a deep breath and leaned forward. Could I ask you something, sir? Just one thing. And if you answer, I'll never ask again. The old man just scowled at her. She cleared her throat. What was it like up there at the willow? His fist clenched. Just tell me a little, she pleaded. Was there any sign, any at all, of my mother? No! He pounded the table so hard it rattled. All I saw was ghouls out to devour you and me. Be you lame in the head, Rowana? That blasted tree, that whole forest, it holds nothing but death. Do you hear? His eyes blazed. Nothing but death. Meekly, she nodded. And from beyond the cottage walls came the mournful call of an owl, echoing in the night air. Thank you.